First of all, my name is uh, Joe Bassett. I'm the CEO and president of uh, two companies, Don Equipment Company, that most of you have heard of. We make products for planters, and our new company, Underground Agriculture. And the reason why Underground Agriculture exists is because a couple of years ago, I had kind of a crisis of conscience. And I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal, and I and it was overlaying data of uh, corn yields since 1929 and net farm income since 1929. And I realized, wait a minute, farming is a rat race. We keep growing more, but my customers are making no more money. And so I thought, okay, well, who are we serving? And I thought, okay, well, I, I don't come from a farm background, as all of you guys know. I actually, I come from an engineering family. My father actually studied engineering here at UW in the 60s. Um, I, went, I studied physics at the University of Iowa. Um, and I, I don't come from a legacy of, of farming. And I thought, okay, well, my customers are farmers. So how do I serve them? Well, let's think about it. Let's work backwards. Well, the, what farmers need is they need to make the most amount of money per acre. And then I started thinking, well, how do we make the most amount of money per acre? And the way we make the most amount of money per acre is by, it's not just about growing higher yields, right? Because we keep growing higher yields, yet we keep not making more money. There has to be something else to it. So I became really interested um, in uh, cover crops and uh, organic no-till and started thinking about this actually now five and six years ago. And um, I saw an invention uh, on the internet uh, that was uh, from a gentleman in southeastern Pennsylvania named Charles Martin, and it was this roller crimper device. And I saw it and I was like, that's a really good invention. And I, two days later, I drove out there and I was sitting, uh, Charles is a, a Mennonite, and I was sitting in his uh, kitchen with his wife, Ruth, who is a, quite a negotiator, in uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And I said, I'm your guy. Let's do a, you're going to do a deal with me. And so I was like, okay, we're going to do this. So we uh, got into the roller crimper, which is a remarkable device that actually has a lot of different applications. Um, instead of the traditional roller crimpers that you guys are mostly aware of that mount on the front of the tractor, this is a device that uh, is mounted to the frame of the planter and in some ways uh, would in, empower kind of uh, to work backwards. At that time, I was looking at the regulatory pressure. My, my thesis was that, okay, look at the regulatory pressure around water quality in southeastern Pennsylvania and the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And I said, and my thesis was that that type of regulatory pressure around conservation agriculture and water quality was going to then export itself to the Midwest and uh, I now have zero belief that that's going to happen. And I, and I don't believe that that will ever happen. So uh, I've since completely changed that thesis. Here's me with Steve Groff uh, when I was a bit younger. Um, the picture in the upper right-hand corner uh, is from a gentleman that was actually here last year named Brent Schlenker from Iowa. He was another early adopter of ours, one of the first um, on-farm organic no-till experiments that I did. And uh, let's see here, the idea was that, okay, we're going to take the same type of practices that they're doing in southeastern Pennsylvania, and we're going to take an engineered approach to make them uh, empower the adoption of these types of practices on the larger scale. Um, and it largely worked, but, uh, you know, what I came to realize was that Okay, soil health, great. Cereal rye as a mechanism for weed control, great. Uh, very quickly, I came to realize that roller crimping is not the only problem. And when we go into our customer base, our customer base is largely in Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, the northern Corn Belt. And I was like, okay, you know.
Junction, which is a place we've had a lot of success. Uh, in further south, where they have uh, a different set of weed problems than we have in the northern climates, uh, cotton, we've, we actually grew the highest yielding cotton in that county in um, uh, uh, western Tennessee. Um, I put in this slide because there was some talk about corn not working earlier. And so uh, the idea of corn into cereal rye, and I'm going to connect back with what Brian was saying. I think, let me ask you guys a question. Why do you think conventional tillage works? Nobody. I have a hypothesis. I believe conventional tillage works because it makes your planter work better. Conventional tillage works because your planter runs, allows it, allows a, a true V planter. A true V planter is something that is large, was invented by a guy in North Dakota in like 1950, right? And everything we're doing today is basically propping up this double disc opener design that's, that's from them, right? And what did they do in 1950? They did conventional tillage. And it was, and you worked the heck out of it, right? And before that, they had runner planters. And how do you get a good stand? You need good depth control. You need good seed to soil contact. You need good spacing and not be bouncing all around, right? I don't, I don't, I don't honestly believe that like the soil temperature arguments or a lot of these other things are, are uh, true. I think that what conventional tillage and to a certain extent strip till uh, does is provide a uh, avenue for a conventional planter design to maximize its performance. Um, and the ZRX roller crimper device that we talked about previously exists in two configurations, one of which does row cleaning, one of which does not do row cleaning. Organic producers will generally choose to do no row cleaning. They don't want any, any bare soil is a place where weeds are going to grow, right? So they, they'll use a configuration where there's no row cleaner. If you want to succeed with corn and cereal rye, you have to do the row cleaning. Um, and you have to have a nutrient management. You have to clear a black path. You have to focus on the planter. Corn, corn it, it, beans are actually really easy to grow, right? You can almost throw beans at the ground. Um, corn is harder to grow. And cotton is as actually even harder yet. Cotton like wants to die the minute it comes out of the bag. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of a hierarchy of difficulty. And so you need to clear a path. I'm I'm not an agronomist. I don't do. You guys that are agronomists, is is allopathy real? It is real, right? Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know because some people are like, oh, no, allopathy's not real. I don't know. I just, I'm like, you know what the metaphor is? So, because I come from an engineering background, you know, in, in auto racing, you have the race car drivers and then you have the race engineers. And one of the great things about working with farmers, from my perspective, and also collaborating with, you know, researchers like you guys is I can't do my job. It's great to have a great, a great race car driver is great at giving feedback to the race engineer because you don't know how to set up the car and you don't know how to do, I don't know how to do my job if I'm not getting the right feedback from the farmers and, and doing their jobs. Okay, so very quick, quickly we, we realized when we came out with the Xerox roller crimper that the, there's a way bigger problem which is getting enough cover crop to roll. <laughs> And uh, so if you're in a northern climate like this, the likelihood that you're going to go out after harvest and plant your cover crop and have enough uh, biomass there to roll down with a system like ours is very low. So you have to, you know, interceding, you have to get it started earlier. And even then, you have to become okay with planting later. I, you know, I, there's so much fear around planting later. And I, and I think that Aaron's data somehow kind of just uh, speaks to the fact that maybe we don't have to be quite as worried about planting dates as we think. So we make this, this is about making simple, low cost, basic duo seed opener uh, for inner seeding. So we're like, okay, all right. So now we've got the uh, inner row seeding. We're kind of working on that piece of the puzzle. And then very early on, so we have had great weed control with uh, cereal rye cover crops and other cover crop systems with the roller crimper method. However, I do not believe that it will ever, because we're in the business of 
right now, for me, regenerative agriculture is that I'm in the business of losing money. I'm making an investment in a belief that the broader regenerative movement and that via organic no-till, I'm going to create a system via which people will make the most money and that it will become a big business. By taking a – I'm effectively gambling also on the people in this room because in my other business that actually makes me money, nobody believes that this is possible. The, the conventional wisdom of what the future of agriculture is going to look like is basically taking con the conventional agriculture that we know and then ramping it up with digitization. Okay? We'll, that, what does technology and, – and I ask a really basic question. What is technology? And what is complexity? And my hypothesis is that, okay, when we think technology, the people that are the, the uh, you know, defining what is ag tech – and, and Brian's in this line of work, but I'm not going to – but but people believe – ag tech is overly informed by consumer Internet technology. The money coming into the industry is coming from people whose viewpoints about what technology looks like is defined by the consumer Internet. More data, more machine learning, more artificial intelligence. Okay, now we have, now we have sea and spray technology, right? You've got robots out there, and they're going to – they're going to go out there and look at every single weed and spray them and use machine learning and blah, 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 blah. My contrarian viewpoint, and I believe that great business opportunities exist from making contrarian bets, that there's actually a huge amount of technology that is hidden in plain sight right under our feet, that the natural world has the, these amazingly sophisticated relationships and the mycorrhizal aspects and things I, I frankly have – no real formal understanding of, that there's complex relationships there that are, like, undiscovered, that we know more about the moon than we know about plant communication and why certain things work the way they work inside of the soil, and that that, and that, that is technology, and that there's this great hubris of the, the industrial 20th century of America and the world that we will engineer the natural world and that we will pound it into whatever shape we want. And I think that there may be more money to make by making a contrarian bet. And so, but back, I digress, and we come back to the fact that cereal rye is unlikely if we're looking at, at, at a mass scale adoption. Like, instead of just a couple of extremely, everyone in this room are probably like the upper 1% of, of management of operators out there, right? The vast majority of my clients, they're, Call the co-op, spread some fertilizer, I'm going to Hawaii. You know, it's, it, they're, they're not, like, it's not the same way, right? So there has to be simple approaches, right? It has to be worked out. And it's not, you're not going to have perfect weed control. The one thing you know, the, the only thing I, I know for a fact about all of the people I've seen doing organic no-till experiments is that it will not work out. It will not work out perfectly. It, something will go wrong. Okay, so we thought, all right, well, you're going to have some weeds coming up. What do we do? Then we thought, uh, years and years ago, I thought, okay, well, we'll come out with the Romo, right? So it's like a last-ditch thing where it's like, okay, I've got pretty good weed control. Oh, I'm going to go on another thing. So our test field, we operate a test field. And uh, there's actually an organic bean field right next to our test field, which for DeKalb County, Illinois, is pretty remarkable. And the organic growth in DeKalb County is pretty high. And I was looking at them. And, you know, our test field, we basically just run equipment around in circles for hundreds of hours. Uh, and it went to weeds pretty bad. And I was like, okay, I see his field over there. I'm like, this is going to weeds. And I was like, wait a minute. The weeds are actually infecting the field. And so I, we're saying, okay, well, let's just, you know.
was a horrible time. Okay? And I'll tell you what. The ROMO is a deceptively simple looking engineering problem because what it really is is a power management problem. Um, and so this flail design kind of worked, but then we went to a number of places. Like we, we tested over with Mike Shooter over there. And uh, he had this um, uh, vetch, and it just bogged down in this thick rat's nest of vetch. And it, you just didn't have the torque that you have to deliver to it. So. That brings us to right now, where we come out with the Romo 2, which is a new concept, uh, which is the sickle bar concept. This is a proof of concept only, and it will evolve a lot. And just like you guys have to kind of take an experimental approach about the way you farm, I have to take an experimental approach about the way we build things, and that we have to, we'll try some things, and then we'll do some other things. And so this is a sickle bar that will go in between the rows. It, it's very scalable to different row widths. And then there's an adjustable height sickle that goes over the top of the the bean crop, we're, we're talking about beans here. And then you'll have sh different rows with short and uh, long arms so that you're completely covering over the top of the beans. So basically, okay, you've got some weeds coming up through your system, you just give the field a haircut. And you kind of clean it up a bit. And so that brings us to present. So I'm really excited to um, have a better showing out at the Arlington test site this year than we had last year with the Romo. Um, okay, now planters. Anyone can plant in black tilled soil. So the other part of what we do at Dawn Equipment is an alternative viewpoint. And we make these, uh, we basically make a system called the Reflex Planter Automation System. And the reason why I bring it up here is this is a system that is an electrohydraulic control system that automates everything that a farmer would traditionally adjust with a handle or a manual adjustment. It makes it fully automatic. And the reason I bring it up to this audience is because what we will be able to do, if you notice right here, this is what's called the ACS, the active closing system. It has this firming wheel that runs in the furrow, and that firming wheel has a sensor attached to it, and it basically measures the presence of the furrow, okay? And then the system is hydraulically, and that, that, that makes a datum line of where the seed is. And then we're hydraulically controlling the position of the closing wheel so that you're keeping constant closing position as we go through the field. Also installed on this planter, uh, is the ADC, the active depth control system, which can change the depth of the planter remotely. And one of the things I've realized that I want to do here next year with, with some of these cooperators is we will take this system and we will digitally link it with this system, right? So what's one of the other problems planting green and into heavy cover crops? It's the fact that you have terrible depth control, okay? So you're planting over a mat of residue this thick and you're trying to plant a bean this deep? I mean, there's a lot of ways for it to go wrong. So what we can do is use that wheel in order to sense the presence of the furrow and then actively change the depth so that if the furrow gets too shallow, we'll automatically set the planter deeper to make sure that you're staying in the ground um, even if you're planting over a thick cover crop. And a uh, couple basic points for when you're planting green and planting into an intensive cover crop system. Weight, weight, and more weight. Put lots of weight on the planter. Always err on the side of more down pressure rather than less. Narrow gauge wheels. Get the narrowest possible gauge wheels you can. Automated down pressure control system and a short tooth closing wheels. And uh, apologize for going long. I am done. And uh, thank you.